gang. It's Will from Tested. And it's Norm from Tested. Norman Chan. Uh, we have more Android phones. More. They never stop, do they? They know. There are so many OEMs, and um, it's good because they are interesting in their own way. So, so just before we get into the actual phone, what's your state of the Android union right now? I mean, it seems like the big kind of three manufacturers are as they have been, LG, Samsung, and HTC. Motorola is also a good one. Okay. I think those, I would say, Sony? are... Sony, uh, yes, so he's trying to do well, doing a little rebranding with their phones, and they each have their strengths. Um, I was never really big on Samsung, I like the Moto X a lot, and then mm -hmm. I'm primarily using the GS6. Uh, but today, today we're looking at LG's new flagship. This is the LG G4. Okay. Now the G3 last year was the first Android phone, the first, really the first big phone, mass market phone, with a 2560 by 1440 screen. Uh, since then, of course, we've had the Galaxy Note 4, we've mm -hmm. had the uh, Galaxy S6 from Samsung, both of those phones having high resolution screens, but those are AMOLED screens. Mm -hmm. LG, they use an LCD screen. Um, is it and IPS? It is IPS LCD screen uh, with RGB stripe. And the two big features on the LG G4 are the screen and the camera. We'll talk about those uh, in a little bit. Okay. Uh, so let's look at the phone right now um, to start. <laughs> this is LG's uh, phone. I know that a lot of people have kind of positioned this phone as a competitor to the GS6, and I'll just have them next to each other uh, right now. But the GS6, actually, I would say is is not really, even though it's Samsung's flagship, this is really a competitor for the Note 4 uh, for a couple of reasons. It's a lot, it looks a lot bigger just it in is person. It's definitely a little bigger. This is a 5.5 inch screen, uh, <laughs> well within what people would call the phablet category. That's the only time I'm gonna say that word. Those people are bad. Those people are totally bad. Um, but uh, the reason a lot of people wanna pit this against the GS6 is because it has the things that Samsung took out of that's Galaxy S6. Oh, so hold on. Can I, can I run down the list? You can totally run down the list. It has a removable battery? Has, yes. So removable okay. back. So let me flip this around. Uh, I have the plastic version. <laughs> you can see that it has an interesting kind of diamond that's texture. That's cool. Uh, I know that they also do like a leather back version that look, that I did not like. But do they charge more for that or is it just a, cho a choice you select? It's a choice you select. Okay. Um, so removable back. There you go. Oh, it is a removable battery. Hold on. I bet that there's an SD card in there. There is. SD card slot in there. Micro SD card, XD uh, SC, I believe, so a high just capacity. Up to 128 gigs or what? Uh, bigger sizes big, than they make massive, right now. Massive, massive okay. sizes. Um, removable uh, 3000 milliamp hour battery, oh, which is kind battery. of slots between that GS6 and Note 4. Um, you have, it's a GSM phone, uh, but yeah, so removable back. You have the removable battery and expandable storage, things that really were taken out of the GS6, but the Note 4 has it, I would expect and hope that the Note 5 has it as well. Um, but LG also does a thing that differentiates itself from Samsung's phones <laughs> in that they make curved phones, and uh, this one has a curve. It's, so It's kind of like the Apple bezel trick, right? It looks a little thinner when you're looking at it from the side, yes. but it is actually a pretty fat phone. It right? is a, actually a fairly fat phone. Uh, not too heavy, again, fits <laughs> between the weight of that GS6 and Note 4, but I don't know if you could even notice, can you see the curve on the screen? Oh, no. Not on the camera. Can I see it in person? In person? A little bit, yeah. There is a very gentle curve. LG also makes a phone called the Flex series. The Flex 1, the Flex 2. Uh, the Flex 2 has a much bigger curve uh, for putting it against your cheek. Uh, this is a more gentler curve. I didn't even notice oh, it. Oh, so unlike the Edge, which is curved from, from uh, on the long sides, yeah, so this is curved from top to bottom. Yeah, the Samsung uh, uh, GS6 Edge, which I don't have, but I can demonstrate how on this phone it would be the equivalent of, it would be curved on here ah. for icons for swiping left and right. Uh, this is curved like Like, like a phone, so. like, a, like an old school, like a, like a phone that you hang on the wall in your kitchen. Yeah, curved like that. Remember those um, landlines. Also, the back is a little bulbous. If you put it down, you, you know. Does it spin? Oh yeah, that thing. Totally spins. Um, the, the thing I like about this, just looking at it, is the ratio of bezel to screen is much better on the LG phone than it is on the Samsung it phone. It is, yeah. There's a, and, and a lot of that's also because there's no dedicated home button, fingerprint sensor on the bottom. Right. And it's also capacitive white buttons. bezel versus black bezel, which makes it, I think, it highlights the difference as well. Um, um, so yeah, there's a lot of, uh, <laughs> it's a lot of screen, not a lot of bezel. It's 5.5 inches. I think it's, it's pretty bulbous. Mm -hmm. I mean, the Note 4 is heavier, but also has a pen. There's no pen here. Uh, LG also does a thing where it doesn't put buttons on the sides ah. or, the, or the top. So where's the volume control? 
There's only the USB 2 and headphone jack here. Wait, wait, how do you control volume, Norm? Power is this button right there. Really? And volume are these rocker buttons. Is it also a fingerprint sensor or anything? Nope. Does it track your activity? No, so there is a heartbeat sensor, okay. yes. But home, home button right here. That seems like it would make me crazy. Well, I guess the, that's where you, uh, okay. The idea is that you hold like that and then you can <clears> press <throat> up and down for volume. And your shortcuts also are, for example, double tapping that uh, takes you to the camera. Mm. And then because there's no dedicated home button, you scroll from the bottom, uh, Android Lollipop. 5.1. So it has the software, the soft buttons. In the soft middle. buttons, you can scroll up and it does the full, whole full screen stuff. I'm not a big fan of the, the curve back. I like phones that are flush, but that's a personal preference. Uh, one of the other does, consequences. Does, does the camera poke out? Sorry. The camera pokes out a little it bit. It still pokes out even though it's that fat? Yeah. Let me, oh. yeah. Can you see that? Yeah. It pokes out just a little bit. So it's actually still sitting on that camera. That's unfortunate. Rocking it back and forth. That's why I don't like it. Um, the speaker is right there, and I actually block the speaker way too frequently. Oh, so you can't even do the thing like you do with an iPhone or, or a bottom speaker where you kind of cup your hands around the side right. when you want it to be louder. No. You just have to, that sucks. I think the speaker is, is mediocre. <laughs> um, but that's just design aesthetics. Uh, it's a personal preference thing. I still prefer the size of uh, the GS6. The, the, the slightly bigger than an old phone, way smaller than a uh, tablet. I'll also show you the fun lock screen effect. Oh, this is the best. Well, that, it's like, a, it's like uh, peeking into a different a different portal. Can you choose which, is it always circles, or can you make it be you like make diamonds it and stuff? Uh, oh. there, there are several of <coughs> them. Uh, let me see if I can. I think That's such a good, it. it's such a neat, like it's so dumb, but so Circle good. mosaic, you can do uh, the hula hoop, Ooh, which is actually, particle. The, uh, the, the there's some like weird ones like this is really weird. I don't. No, oh, hold on. I need to actually save it. Um, I don't like this one at all. Like, oh, like what? What is this like? Sci-fi? Minority it, Report? Yeah, it's like bad sci-fi. Can you rotate? Enhance? No, uh, it's called vector circle. Two, uh, uh, the particles. default is light, light particles. Uh, light particles. I don't like this one either. Light particles sound so cool though. Oh yeah, that, no, no, that that's sucks. That's total artificial. Like bad lens flare. Yeah, I don't like that. No. Nope. Oh. Um, people who made that are bad people. What I do like is the hula hoop one. Let's just change to that one. Okay. These are the things We're spending that really way too differentiate much time on this, between. But... Like this oh, one's kind of nice. Yeah, so can you, you kinda... can you can you whap, wing them around? Yeah, it's cool. A little bit, a little bit. Yeah. So this I, I, I like, like the I like one you one. went with. I think best. That's my yeah. favorite. But all right, let's do the circle mosaic. Okay. So um, anyway, but, but that's part of their their custom. Like how customizes the OS on this thing? Because that's always the first thing. Yeah. I know so lock screen, obviously, uh, their customized shortcuts on the bottom. Uh, you can set those. Uh, the big thing is when it comes to modern Android phones is the notifications tray is always customized. Mm -hmm. um, so these shortcuts here, uh, which you can swipe all the way as opposed to drawing them out. Um, you have your settings for audio, you know, ringtone notifications, um, and then really the settings menu is where a lot of the, the customization comes in. Um, so it's you have a full list or these tabs. Um, and then there actually uh, there's a clever um, uh, there's a a clever smart settings uh, that's unique to LG, uh, where you can say when at home, then oh, you change your profiles, or when you're plugged into Bluetooth, for example, plugged into music, um, then different things happen. So this is a feature that like, I had on a Nokia phone in 2002 or 2003 that was amazing. When I was on the right cell tower or in the right Wi-Fi, right at the right, right, right Wi-Fi network, it just said, OK, you're at home, so turn the ringer up all the way. Oh, you're at exactly. work, turn the ringer down. Yeah, that and, great. and you can get apps that will do that on, on an yeah. Android Play and Google Play. Um, I, of course, I always put Google Now as the launcher because mm -hmm. I like swiping the left, but they have their own version of it. Uh, another thing that's built in uh, is multitasking. Mm -hmm. So if I open, for example, the multitasking menu, I can have dual windows, mm. woohoo, and then I can say, for example, I want to open YouTube on one, and I'll open gallery on the other. And you were kind of down on multitasking features on um, the Note 4 and the GS6. I don't like when they box it in a window, <laughs> but mm -hmm. what I do like is when you have the top down and you can actually just reposition. Mm. Um, so that's neat. Um, so you find, you find it more useful? This time? Do you use it at all, or is it something that's just I definitely have I have definitely used it copying from web browser <laughs> to email. Okay. So And of course, uh, they also have multiple uh, clipboards. So if you're copying text, you can select from previous clipboards. It's not just one. Oh, clipboard. that's nice. Um, 
But that's that's the Android stuff. I don't think it's obtrusive. It's Android 5.1 Lollipop, and that's the latest one for now. We'll see how fast this gets updated to Android M when that's out in the fall. Okay. Uh, so <laughs> performance. Uh, as I've said before, performance on Android phones now, when you're using whether using an Exynos processor or a Snapdragon, it's a known quantity. Um, you know, there are more, all you know six or eight cores now, um, and nothing proves that we've reached this good solid point with performance on Android phones and LG choosing not to put the best Snapdragon processor on this phone. So you're saying they chose a lower powered processor because they felt like it's not necessary to it's go big anymore. unnecessary to go with the most cores or the fastest GPU. Um, because there's so many different Android devices, they went with something that's more power efficient mm -hmm. and lower cost <laughs> for them doesn't actually translate the lower cost for the user, but it just proves that they can go with the Snapdragon 808, they don't need the Snapdragon 810. Is this, is this, does this work because of the way the Android ecosystem works? Because there's, there's such a deep trough of devices that yes. are running older and older and older mm -hmm. SOCs and The and games are never, there, there aren't any games that say <clears throat> you need, you know, the fastest Snapdragon or the Snaps Exynos. Right. Uh, you get better benchmarks, scores, uh, but in day to day, and in the vast majority of apps, uh, you're fine. Oh, well, and I don't know about you, but most of the stuff that I use is not, it, it's 2D stuff. I'm not doing a ton of 3D stuff right. on my phone. So maybe it's like a video editor, an mm -hmm. exporting, you might get a little faster. Uh, but uh, the Snapdragon 808 processor in here, uh, it's six cores, it actually has four low power cores and two high power cores. Okay. Uh, it doesn't get as hot as the LG Flex 2 or the pre-LG G3 did, uh, which is good. Um, and the, even though the GPU is the Adreno 418, uh, which is a little slower than what's in the, the Max Samsung, or mm -hmm. uh, Snapdragon, um, it's fine for your games. Um, if you're gonna play, you know, uh, what's uh, the racing game everyone plays on, on Android, it's gonna be totally Real fine Real asphalt? That. Asphalt, yes. Exactly. Um, it feels fast. Uh, if you want to run benchmarks, the GS6 <laughs> is faster uh, with the Exynos processor, but it's totally fine. So one of the big differentiators for us in the last few generations of phones has been camera. It's yes. It's the thing that we use. It, it, it is, if you look at what I use my phone for, it's, it's basically email, texting, and cameras. Right, or well, I'm also looking at the phone too, the screen. Right, right, right. Uh, so let's talk about the camera first. Uh, like we said earlier, it does have that bulge. Um, it's not using a Sony sensor. Like, <laughs> okay. for example, uh, Samsung has phones with their sensor or Sony sensors. iPhones, like your iPhone 6, uh, 6 Plus, the Duke, has a, um, has a Sony sensor. This is a 16 megapixel um, sensor that's made by LG. Mm -hmm. And it's not the biggest sensor size. Uh, Sony like actually, physical size physical of the chip. sensor size. Okay. But it is bigger than what's in the GS6, and it is bigger than what's in the iPhone 6. Um, but it does have probably the best lens in any smartphone right so now. So just to give point of comparison, the GS6 was 12 megapixels? 16 megapixels 16 megapixels as well. As well. The iPhone's only 8 megapixels, mm -hmm. has been, seems like that's where they're parked forever. Yep. Um, what, how does the lens impact the... So the lens is a f1.8 lens. Um, what that means, and compared to, for example, f2.2, it's a wider aperture lens, which means it can take more light in in the lens, you get better depth of field effects, mm -hmm. uh, and also you can take photos in lower light without having to bump the ISO or lower the shutter speed as much. Okay. Uh, in practice, it does mean that, and I'll show photos in a little bit, uh, the low light photos are excellent on this camera. Now, uh, in addition to using, uh, having a, a good, a big sensor, and also a really great lens. The camera app is also fantastic. So I'm gonna show that. And this is an right LG now. design camera app? This is the LG design camera app. Well, that um, looks familiar. I'm actually shooting in the manual <clears throat> mode, which is one of the best manual modes I've seen on any Android phone. Uh, you can, of course, use simple, auto, or manual. In auto, you lose all these top-down the menus. I'm gonna go back to manual. And you can see I have not only the white balance number at the top here, mm -hmm. I have a histogram for my balance, real-time histogram. I can do uh, ISO, shutter, it's always F8, you can't actually change aperture on that. You have tap the focus, I can actually change my white balance, so if I can make this You can warm it all up. It uses what uh, LG calls this laser, uh, for auto white balance, uh, a laser-based system to gauge uh, focus and um, 
Wait, white it's, really, it's shooting freaking lasers? Yeah, I don't think it's really oh, okay. freaking lasers. Auto white balance is fine because it also <laughs> saves, because it's Android uh, 5.1, it does save raw pictures. Oh, we'll also nice. talk about that in a second. Uh, so I don't even have to worry about white balance. Um, I can do, for example, um, exposure compensation. So I can you know, decrease the need for a, a high ISO or, or shutter by just saying stop it down a bit, which is great if I'm shooting in uh, indoors with that's a lot a, of light. That's pretty standard, but this is a better interface for it than, you've, than I've seen before. I can do uh, manual ISO all the way down to ISO 50, oh, that's nice. ISO high up, and also shutter. I can do long exposures up to 30-second uh, long exposures. Oh, so you can get like motion blur and stuff like that if you want to shoot slower than you exactly. should to catch, capture I'm, Chris. That's I'm neat. I'm going shoot it all the way up. Um, and what's really neat is that I actually have a manual focus slider. So Wait, what? So, for example, wow. I get as close as here to so you, figuring. You can still tap to focus if you want, right? Yeah. Okay. You can still tap to focus. Now, the manual focus slider is that really is neat, awesome. but I can't use it in video. I can only, when I think it would be really awesome. Oh, so you can't awesome. do rack focus on the video? I cannot oh. do, if I'm shooting a video, like shoot the video here, all actually, the stuff then all goes the away. stuff it goes like away. Speed right now. And I'm actually in high speed. Um, and, but the manual focus, if you want to like really get that pinpoint focus, mm -hmm. you can do. That's you know, amazing. Focus to infinity, focus here, and it's really responsive. I love this app. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the panorama setting is terrible, and oh. the video quality, there's UHD, full HD, but has many fewer video settings than the Samsung Galaxy S6. UHD, 4K, meaning 4K? 4K. Okay. Um, and the slow motion sucks. It slow mo's at 720p, and it has interlacing problems for that video, unfortunately. Which, 240 or 120? Uh, 240, one okay. eighth the speed. You, do you think this is a, um, or 10th, depending on whether you're shooting at 20 or 30 frames a second mm -hmm. normally. Do you think that that's a, can you adjust the shutter speed when you do high speed though? No. Like, so you can't get motion blur on your, nope. on your high speed, or, or uh, sorry, on time lapses? No, you get okay. one setting, uh, for time basically. Um, let me get my auto again, and again, mm. you can just, all it is, is uh, your panorama modes. Um, I like the manual settings, but it is a little simpler um, in terms of the presets um, than you, and, and uh, the actual deep settings, like li limited simpler. format settings okay. than you get with the GS6. Um, but let's let's actually talk about uh, the, talk, yeah. the photos. So let's show some sample photos um, that I've taken with this, and we can roll those uh, a montage of photos. Um, Ooh, I love a montage. Oh, hey, that's so, familiar. Oh, wait. Yep, outdoor photos. Uh, I'm taking photos in RAW and actually able to import them to Lightroom and do some editing. Is this an um, HDR photo? This is a not an HDR photo, wow. but I could actually I tone down the highlights. Outdoor does fantastic photos. Um, can scroll next. This is a dumb question, but how does HDR work with raw stuff? It can't. So you don't get you don't get HDR with raw. You do not. But then you can post process to get that same information right. if you want. Okay. Yep. HDR is only stackable stack JPEGs. Um, here, uh, toning down the highlights. If you look inside the triangles where that stop hand is, a ton of detail there mm -hmm. that would be otherwise be blown out. Uh, I tried it with the GS6, blown out. And um, these, these are all images that you shot raw and then converted in Lightroom? Uh, no, actually, uh, uh, some of these are just JPEGs okay. straight out of the camera. Uh, this one was a raw image process. Okay. Uh, moving on, um, this one's also processed in raw. I mean. You get the in the shade, the mm -hmm. cars in the shade, but plus the uh, San Francisco, the the Trans America right, building, yeah. the background, um, so much detail. If I zoomed into this, uh, you you actually see all the way down to the Bay Bridge, but between the buildings, just, tons of detail. Just to be clear, the aliasing that we're seeing is because we're sizing this down to 720p, not yep. because of anything else. Um, great indoor <laughs> photos. Um, let's move on just a little bit. Um, Great, this is 16 little, by nine. That looks a little blown out. I'm not quite that pasty. Yeah, you might need to look in the mirror. Uh, but great photos, <laughs> high shutter, you get even things like getting getting uh, the DJI Inspire outdoor. Was this, how far, was this a zoom or was this the, No, this is, this is up close. And in your, 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 there's very little motion blur on the props it looks like, yes. just a little tiny bit, the um, curve. And you, because it's outdoor and do fast shutters, um, I did that manually. Um, wow. And then I believe, uh, and then you can get up close, and get really nice macro photos, um, get some, <laughs> some drops, and, and you, you can see the, still see the background and all the specs. Mm -hmm. Tons and tons of detail. That time I spent 15 minutes taking 60 pictures trying to get the, the inside of the bee, the bee that was on the outside of my windshield from the inside. If you had the manual easier. slider, yeah. it'd be much easier. Um, and then uh, low light photos. Um, 
That guy which, has an uh, amazing beard. Oh yeah, and, and just really, really great low light photos. Um, There's a fair amount of noise here. Do you remember what ISO you were shooting? Was this just 16? This is pretty high. Light? This is 32? no 3200, 2000 or 3200 ISO. Okay. Um, but let's look at some comparisons. So if we flip it over, and I did comparisons with both the GS6 and the uh, your iPhone 6 Plus. Mm -hmm. um, the GS6 is a really interesting comparison because they're both 16 by 9, 16 megapixel cameras. Mm -hmm. You can actually literally zoom them 100% put them side by side and see what the benefits of having a bigger sensor are. And do you know which camera you have in your GS6? Do you uh, remember? It is, I believe, the Samsung one. Okay. Uh, yes, the, on some Samsung models there's a Sony one, but they right. are nearly indistinguishable. Okay. Um, the Samsung actually does <coughs> not sh let you shoot in RAW. Oh. Even though it has Lollipop, uh, which is a, a big difference. So you're not shooting RAW? No, only, oh, only JPEGs. Um, and each phone, because of the, the camera software, each phone has different JPEG compression right, right, uh, right. algorithms. So even though you're saving a seven, seven megabyte image, compared to the RAW, you know, the way they crunch the, the, the black areas in, get through the color banding, will be different, which sometimes works to the phone's advantage. I mean, but I, I assume since you're able to shoot RAW, can you, shoot, you can shoot RAW and JPEG at the same time, right? Yep, it saves so, both the RAW and the JPEG, and you can do a direct comparison. Yes, yeah, so I mean, that's really good. Uh, so let's look at uh, some comparison photos between, uh, I think this phone. So I have a series of A-B tests. Mm -hmm. Will, I'm going to want you to look oh, at this photo and tell me. Uh, well, this, this isn't is, an A-B test. This is just an A test. Well, A test. Photo one. Yeah. And then let's go to photo two right next to it. Which camera do you like better? Which one do you like better? The first one is definitely better. You think the first one's better? Yeah. Now, can you go back again, Joey? Sorry. Well, then let's go oh, forward. OK. The first one's on the left. The second one's on the right. Tell me which one's better. Well, the second, the, first, the one on the left is out of focus. This is one on the right. It's actually is too, not out of focus. The PBR PBR you just ASAP can't, isn't crisp because it's, because, because it's you so have, grainy because you don't have the detail. Okay, so like it's better low light on the right, but I think the picture on the left probably looks better, right? Like the color representation is better on the picture on the left. And that's exactly what I was talking about when you mean the when I meant the the JPEG compression. Oh, this so is okay. The one on the left is from the Samsung phone. Yeah. The one on the right from the uh, from the LG G4. You get much more detail. On the right, but because you're getting shooting the raw image, notice that um, the color on the poster on the on the right side, you see all that like discoloration yeah. with the, the green and the the, the magenta. Uh, that all gets flattened out when you save the JPEG. So in JPEGs, you actually, if you take a look at a photo from the iPhone mm -hmm. or from the GS6, um, it, it evens all so out. So just to be clear here, you're comparing apples to oranges though, because you're comparing a JPEG on the left with a raw on the right. Yes, okay. but also you're getting also more, more details. Right. Uh, so let's move to the next, next uh, series of comparisons. Um, so there's a photo here. It's a crazy floor. It's upside, it might be upside down, it actually. It was upside down. Ah, that's all right. And then photo B. Um, and then let's actually move to the next, next yeah, image, the, which is a left-right comparison. Yeah, I think the one on the... Uh, I mean, knowing what those things actually look like in the real world, the, the pink on the left is crazy exaggerated compared to what it was in, in, in reality. So I'll tell you what this comparison is. This is actually from your iPhone. It's okay. one on the left, and the G4 is one on the right. Yeah, I think the, I think the iPhone is way pinked out compared so, to what it... Of course, you also have the screens in the background on the iPhone, so because we didn't shoot those exactly at the same time. Uh, well, you notice in that top right corner where you see the, the spotlight, the yeah. gobo lights, uh -huh. you can actually make out much more shadow detail on true. the LG. Uh, but once again, you notice that the LG has that kind of discoloration in the noise, uh -huh. uh, and that all gets flattened out. So on the iPhone side, that JPEG gets saved, all black. Yeah, like if I was looking at the dark details, I'd say the one on the left is better. I think the color is jacked up on the one on, on the iPhone picture. I I assume that if you're doing shooting raw with this, you're probably going to run some sort of denoise filter on all of the high. And I have shots. run a denoise filter. Oh, already. Yes. So this oh, okay. is with denoise, um, and this was shot raw, so I actually did color correction on the LG with the iPhone. Like you said, the magenta overwhelms it. Yeah. You can't do the color correction, a limited amount of color correction to post. With LG, you don't have to even worry about it. There's there's some weird aliasing on those horizontal lights on the on the, the iPhone? L, no, on the LG. Actually, on both of them, on I both. guess. Yep. Yeah, it's both. they're both there. So I would say both of, neither of these are great pictures. Um, and then let's move on. Uh, oh. Here's a photo one of a, a brick wall. OK. I'm going to move the. This is outside in full light. Mm -hmm. Photo two. Ooh. I think the one on the left, the first one was better. 
and then do a direct comparison. Yeah, the one on the, I, I mean, again, I know what this, I remember what this looked like because I paid attention to you taking the photo. I think the one on the left is a truer representation of the real world. Well, the, the colors don't mean anything. If you zoom, this is a 100%, I will tell you for a fact <coughs> that the one on the right has more detail, but if, uh, we won't rewind, but the, there was actually some interesting vignetting that was going on. With yeah, the there, there was a there was a around the edge. There yeah. you go. So it looked darker, and this is not artificial this, vignetting. This, this like a filter. It's right. just out of camera because of the way they use their lens. There was vignetting, and with the iPhone photo, it was just a flat image. Yeah. So I think Apple is doing some interesting things with their uh, JPEG uh, processing. It seems like they do smarter, uh, a pretty good job with JPEG yes. processing, yep. both to brighten up dark images and to bring out detail. Like it, it almost looks like they're doing image analysis and picking out faces and stuff like that when you have humans in shots. Some and some cameras, some point yeah. and shoot cameras do the exact same thing. Uh, I mean, look at that, that white brick. Yeah. Um, up close with Pixel 100%, uh, the LG one, you can see definitely more detail. Was, was this taken at the same distance away? Same exact So distance again, away. this is the same situation where you're getting a tighter field of view because there's more pixels more pixel, on the Because one's on the a 16 LG megapixel camera, yeah. and one's 8 megapixel. I, I mean, do you think, it, well, we'll talk about that on the podcast at some point. But All right, uh, and then <laughs> let's move on one more. Now, this example is not a comparison between phones and phones. It's a comparison between uh, JPEG and RAW. Okay. So this first image is JPEG. Okay. Um, and the second image is RAW. Now you notice the RAW one, I did color corrections, the colors are more accurate. Uh -huh. And But you see on the girl in the front, her face, you see that noise <laughs> yeah. in her face. And you've denoised these. And I've denoised. So if you look at the comparison, you see more detail on the right side where it's RAW, mm -hmm. especially that guy. Yeah, the JPEG. Look, look at the, up. Wrist, the wristband. There's more. There's more stuff going in there, and that hand that's in the foreground. But the JPEG processing actually evens out that noise better than I could in Lightroom. That guy in the foreground. You can't tell he's wearing glasses on the shot on the left. I, I mean, this is like smearing Vaseline on your camera lens, right? It's gonna. It softens everything up, makes it a little bit mm -hmm. more human. So there are pros and cons to, to saving in RAW and in JPEG. Um, I think it's a fantastic camera. There's actually one image I didn't even get the chance to show. It's a, a great. Uh, a great f airplane shot of the, the Bay Area. And there's so much detail. Uh, with this camera, uh, it's approaching <laughs> compact point and shoot quality. Like bad point and shoot or like your yeah, RX100 you Mark III? Like, this is a 100% crop of. Wow, that's, that's a nice shot. That is. It's and, still. And this is cropped in. This is a raw though, right? This is a raw. Yeah. yeah. I, so you see the noise details and actually some a little bit of banding, uh, uh, but it's just so much detail. This is, I mean, but. but I use my phone camera because I don't want to have to fool with RAW, right? Like, I, I, want, I want to have something I can take a picture mm -hmm. and text it to someone or put it on Flickr or whatever and not have to worry about that stuff. Are there tools to manage RAW on the phone or are you having to take all these not off on the, the phone? phone? Yeah, see, and that because sucks. it saves as both RAW and JPEG, you have the JPEG. I know, I know. You it's can just do whatever you want with that. Three times as much space, right? Because how big are the RAW files? Like the RAW 12 megs? 25 megs. Yeah, that's huge. Yep. But when um, you import them, you just delete them. Well, and you do have a micro SD card, so you can just save them all you to that, right? Terabytes of storage. Um, can, can you, is the, does the camera give you granular enough control so that you can say, put the RAWs in one folder on the SD card they and save the, dump, no. they all dump all the dumps in place. one folder and you, I mean, you just plug a USB cable and just store yeah. it by file type and control and, delete. And then how do things like, like say Google's photo sharing service or Instagram, stuff like that handle? So new Google photo, photos will just take the JPEGs. Okay. They won't upload the RAWs. It doesn't, it doesn't bother with the RAWs. Yep. Okay. Um, but I assume you can dump the RAWs in Dropbox or something like that if you yeah. want to kill your oh, space. Yeah. Okay. You could totally do that. So really good camera, um, but unfortunately some of the video stuff isn't great. Um, if you just, if you have no interest in doing post-processing for detail or for color correction, mm -hmm. um, you know, the GS6 is still a great camera. iPhone's still a great camera. Um, well, if you get the right G GS6, you might get the one that you can do RAW with as well. No, neither you can do oh. RAW. Oh. No, GS6, oh. just the, the camera software won't, won't even it doesn't, tap into it. doesn't have anything to do with it, okay. Yeah, won't even tap into it. Um, and then there's, of course, <laughs> the screen. So this screen is a 2560 by 1440 screen. Mm -hmm. Now, LG, I think they have their own like kind of VR solution, but it's not paired with Oculus, so it's not something I would recommend. So the well, really, well, I mean, we haven't tested it, but it's uh, it, it, it looked not, janky. Yeah, yeah. So it's not not really taking advantage of the screen. Uh, let's do like I always love to do. Let's do the A B comparison. So Will, oh, I'm going to give you, and of course I'm going to show you guys out there two images, a, s a series of images that look almost 
exactly. Well, I'm the looking same. at them filtered through. But I'm going to give it to you oh, right now. Okay. One is a 1080p image, and one is a, a 1440p image. Get as close to the screen as you want. I promise you, even though it's RGB stripe and you have technically more subpixels than you do with the AMOLED, you can't tell the difference. I mean, they look ex they, uh, actually. There's a little bit of more on Adam West's shirt on the 1080p one, which I think wait, is wait, the which one do you number think, two. Which one do you think is the 1080p one? I think it's picture number two. Let's we can, let's check. We can, let's go click details. No, it's picture number one. <laughs> I you can zoom in and see almost immediately. Um, if you zoom in, yeah. uh, same with. I mean, I, I've done A/B comparisons. This is another A/B <laughs> comparison. I literally stood in front of these and just squinted for two minutes, and I could not so, tell. So the your point is, with the pixel sizes on the screen that we're talking about here, yeah. the resolution is kind of inconsequential. The resolution absolutely inconsequential, yeah. uh, but it is a fantastic screen. Uh, color representation is top notch. I mean, the, the place the extra pixels will matter is if you're doing high, high UHD video, it doesn't have to do some weird scale down to display it. But I bet but the phone can't even display, display UHD it, video. You can, just, you can run it, you can yeah. display it, but again, you're not going to tell the you're difference. You're not going to tell the difference, okay. Yeah, with moving images. I'm just talking about like morays and stuff like that. It'll yeah, pop up that yeah. wouldn't be there otherwise. Um, it is LCD screen. <laughs> it is plenty bright. It does not get as bright as the Samsung. As the OLED? Uh, as the OLED screen. Okay. Um, I'll just show you. This is that is blinding, that is massively that bright. Um, this does get very bright, but um, how, do, how does it work outside in bright sun? We were in works San Diego great, yesterday. Great in bright sun. I still feel like that the Samsung AMOLED does a better job of the, making the screen look like it's closer to the surface mm -hmm. than than the LCD. Uh, I know some people. It's you know they just they love LCD screens. Apple loves their LCD screens. Uh, this is one of the best screens out there, but I think the resolution, frankly, unnecessary. Yeah, it's I mean, same as last year. It's but it's one of those situations where we're going to keep getting higher resolution because the panels are getting denser pixels. So if if you're if you are making 4K TVs now and you're cutting your phone screen out of a 4K out of a 30 inch 4K TV, it's going to have crazy high pixel density whether you want it or not. Right, uh, but LG like like the fact that they didn't need to put the Snapdragon 810 on this. They didn't need to put. That screen. That's it true. really is a, a box checkpoint selling point, and what the screen comes at a cost is, is battery life. Yeah. So even though there is a 300 milliamp hour battery in this, it has about approximately the same battery life as a GS. A 3,000 milliamp. A 3,000 milliamp hour. Yeah. It is one day of battery life, heavy use. Yesterday on a trip, it went all the way down. I had to charge around 8 o'clock p.m. On a normal day, it will not do a day and a half. See, which that is kind of like my. my Benchmark for the OnePlus One. Well, for we, that size phone. For yeah. this size phone, I want a day and a half battery life. This will be one day yeah, full I, use. I finish with the 6 Plus. I finish 50% almost every day. So I could do, in a pinch, again, two full days, right? Uh, this has no wireless charging <laughs> either. So it doesn't have the Qi charging. Do you find the wireless charging something that you actually use on the other phones? I do. Okay. Yeah, wireless charging and plus Starbucks. Yeah. Wireless charging built in. Starbucks, you have to plug in that USB connection and like kind of hover that dongle. It seems like if, if it has battery problems, having the opportunity to do a, a trickle charge when you're sitting at Starbucks would be nice. I know LG does sell package where you can get an extra battery, mm -hmm. but no, I don't change out batteries. I'm not a person that changes out batteries. Are you, yeah, realistically, I, 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 like I, some people do. I, I, know, look, I know some people definitely do. I look at the pe people who are changing out batteries are people who are working like on events and they're working 18 hours a day and using their phone constantly yeah. and, and not people like us who have three days a year where we, where we run out of battery. Or if they want to change it once every year and a half yeah. so that you actually have a full capacity battery. And so the, the phone lasts more thing. than two years. That, yeah. is, that is a smarter thing That's true. to do. Um, so overall, uh, I think it's um, a... How long did it take to charge, sorry? Oh, it takes, it's, it's pretty slow charging actually. Okay. Yeah, it's not as it's not nearly as fast as the Samsung fast charger. Because I know the the Galaxy S six, the iPhone six, both of those. If you if you're at thirty percent, you plug them in, and an hour later, you're going to be yeah. at eighty percent. Yeah, this one is pr pretty slow charging. Okay, uh, especially topping off. Um, I think it's a good phone. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the things that make it special, which is the camera and the screen, uh, the camera is bigger selling point than the screen. Um, I think these are the best smartphone photos I've taken, are with this phone. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and, and seems like most most versatile too, not definitely just the best. most versatile. Yeah. Uh, things I'm actually want to archive the color, being able to color correct uh, after the fact. Have you uh, tried printing anything? Not printing anything. Okay. Again, mostly for web. Um, it's like unnecessary for most people. 
Uh, if you wanted to blow it up and put it on a billboard, just like Apple's you know, iPhone 6 campaign, mm -hmm. I bet you could, and they look pretty good, uh, but has a lot of the things that, you know, that the Samsung, uh, the Samsung phone, your, your trade-offs. So you're getting this phone if you want the removable battery, you want the expandable storage, yeah. and you want a really good camera. You're getting the Samsung phone if you want a really slim package, if you like the look of AMOLED, you like that type of saturation, mm -hmm. um, and you want the wireless charging, and you want the fingerprint sensor. Okay. So, so no clear winner. No clear winner. It really is a matter of preference, and I think based on my preference, I'm going to go back to the GS6. It's also a little smaller. I like, I like yeah. this, how small it is. I like the flat back, and I think the camera here is good enough. Okay. So, there so that's have it. the LG G4. Um, it's out now. Uh, GSM Networks uh, internationally as well. No Verizon? I think I believe it's Verizon as well. This okay. one's a GS1, GSM okay. uh, version. 200 bucks on contract, 650 off contract. But how much storage by default? Uh, 32 gigs storage. And then you can add as much SD card as you want, yep. up to 64 gigs, which up to maybe 128. No, no, it's many more than that. But, but I mean, you can't yeah. get those cards don't come bigger right. than 128. So whatever so. Sam's, uh, SanDisk or whoever will sell. There we go. Um, and it's running Android 5.1. Android 5.1 Lollipop. Um, and it's our new flagship phone. Uh, don't get the leather back one if you're going to get it. The plastic back is just mm -hmm. fine. No leather backs. See you guys next time. See ya.